All right, what's up everyone? I'm actually doing this first video for my athlete resource on the website that I run for my training business at triumphfitathletics.com. The purpose of these videos is to give all the people that I work with that I train or those of you that decide to stumble upon this on YouTube, a resource for proper instruction for certain positions, whatever it may be, to give you guys all the tools that I use with my athletes and trying to give them the best possible scenario for success when they're in the weight room and when we're doing a lot of our work. Uh, those that don't know me, I'm Mitch. I run Triumph Fit Athletics in Ventura, California. I oversee about 60 athletes right now, uh, swimmers, skaters, uh, military, CFA, uh, Bunch of, a bunch of different stuff, but um, mainly specializing or working with swimmers and skaters. Now, today we're actually going to talk about the hinge. Now, the hinge is reference to a style of movement where we go into like deadlifting, single leg deadlifting, um, positioning, stuff like that, where we basically just have to lean over and you know pick something up off the ground or stay loaded and continue to move. And this can be done wrong very easily. And some of the problems that come along with this is just being completely unaware of position when we're going through and practicing or core habits in moving in this function. And when we talk about core habits, about moving in this function, if I stand sideways, so I go to like lift something up and I go into this severe curl or I am very hyper arched in this position is not really ideal. Some bracing and some arching can be good to go ahead and uh, fight some of the stress that, that is trying to get us to curl and hunch forward, but is not really ideal in the long term because of disc pressure in the spine. Moving on, we're actually talk about things with positioning, trying to use drills to help you understand better positioning and have better awareness of what you're doing and some of this stuff will actually even be able to cross over to squatting. Uh, squatting is another very important movement that I go over with pretty much every single athlete and trying to reinforce good habits of doing so. A couple ways that I like to try to help teach people to hinge correctly is having them start off with a very simple cat-cow drill and having them work into using their hands for guidance for their positioning and trying to understand because some people will go into leaning over and even if I tell them to organize their spine, uh, which basically means put it all in a straight position, it, they'll go in and they'll have a couple good reps and then they'll start going into the hunching forward and stuff like that. So a cat-cow is a, normally a warm-up drill that we use to get the spine ready to, to move where you go quadruped, so that's hands and knees, and then you'll focus on pulling the head up and back, arching the spine nice and in tight, and then going in the opposite. When you tuck the hips, you're gonna try to round everything back and forth. And so this gives you an understanding of this is flexion, and this is extension. And so we learned that, okay, we need to extend the spine, or extend the hips, and flex the spine, flex the hips, and learning those two components for position. Of course, neutral is what we really want, and neutral is the ideal position when we're leaning over to maintain, because when we keep a neutral position, we keep the majority of the work in the appropriate musculature as we do so. The drill that I like to go into using my hands is once we can teach someone, okay, keep the glutes squeezed, keep the spine straight, is we'll take one hand at the sternum and one hand at the belly button or the hip, and the distance between the hands shouldn't change. So if I flex my spine, then the gap closes. If I extend my spine, then the gap between my hands expands, and this means that we break position. So if I can go into leaning over, soft knees, so soft knees means slightly bent knees, and then going into leaning over and not have that change of position happen, then that's good hinge. And when we think of that hinge, we don't think of pushing the hips back per se, like you'll get in a lot of instructional videos. 
for the hinge or for how to deadlift. But rather than thinking of that groin line, like you have a, bar, a Barbie doll, um, some of you girls uh, will probably understand that reference. I had Ninja Turtles, which their legs move much in the same manner. But where that groin line is really where we have that break in the hinge to where we have that kind of like, if I were to like chop, it's like a, what is that, wrestling? Um, where if I were to push into that line and push the hips back, that actually helps with that association with what should be moving. So I'm gonna show you guys a couple hinge drills, or I'm actually going to show you a hinge drill where we use the wall to go ahead and use a reference to be able to move deeper and deeper into that hinge, and of course load the posterior chain correctly. Now this row, you may see a reflection in the mirror behind me, but basically I'm gonna go into a postured position and use that feedback or that identification using my hands that I just showed you guys to be able to move and hinge correctly. So to get lined up very easily, first I'll squeeze my butt and then I'll draw my shoulders back. So I can have the back of my head, my shoulders, my glutes and my heels touching the wall. And then I'll go ahead and get my reference points. So my sternum, you know, top of the abdominals, and then, you know, top of the hip, just below the belly button. Because this is really where our, our thoracolumbar and our, our lumbar spine are, and that's what we're typically really worried about when we're doing hinging and being in good position. So from here, I'm gonna take just, you know, half a step forward, I'm gonna make sure that my feet are straight from my hip and then go into holding that position as I bend the knees and I'll try to set my hips back to the wall without having that change in position. So this is a really simple drill that we can use to learn how to hinge. So this is a, a semi-hinge, so we're not really able to reach for something off the floor, um, but when we were to go into, like, let's say a, a hang clean for Olympic weightlifting where I was gonna pull it from below the knees and drive it in, this would be that position. And this is actually very close in reference to if I was going to do like a kettlebell swing, this would be my end position. My hips against the wall, my back is straight and going forward. So this shows a, a lot to being able to maintain that position. So then if I step in a little bit forward, then the distance is further, I'm going to lean over further. And yeah, my hips, I'm gonna kinda of try to set back into it to keep the shin vertical. Now, the reason why we keep the shin vertical, and I'll show you that in another, in a, in a minute, um, is because if we keep the shin vertical, as we draw the hips back, as we go into this hinge position and keep that, that spine straight, then we start to notice that loading up through the posterior chain, the glutes, the hamstrings, and so forth, and we can see where that effort should really come forward. Now, in hinging, this is a posturally, uh, this is a posturally challenging exercise. And it really, a lot of the most important exercises that we do are actually recovering posture. So once we can lean over correctly, when we come back up, the thought isn't to lift the head and stand up. The thought is to still keep the head in the same position with the spine so it stays neutral and moves with the torso but also in turn, recovering our position by returning our hip to the correct spot. So rather than thinking of lifting my head up as I come along, you'll see where that leads and that spreads the hands apart. I think about keeping the glutes squeezed, keep all that tension in the hip, and then it's forward, pushing the hip forward. And I use this and I teach my athletes, like let's say they have, they have deadlifts on the program, is that when they're going through and they're lifting, once we're getting the bar to the knees and getting through there, I focus on hips forward and driving the hip forward. So we're really emphasizing the hip extension um, and using the glutes. So the glutes are the, really the biggest component to a lot of our overall athleticism and health and being able to do things correctly. And the hamstrings are tremendously critical as well. So if we start to get into doing this into a bad habit, then oftentimes we'll feel less stress in the back.
So the cable pull through is really my favorite go-to for first progression. So if they've never deadlifted before, if they've never done loaded hinging, they don't understand or having difficulty in doing so. So I'll use the banded pull through as my go-to method for the first one. So I tell them, you know, talk about keeping the spine in neutral position where we have that break in the hip line like the ninja turtle and getting that hip forward rather than that back up or that head up when we're lifting out of the position. So when we soft knees, hips back, and then the hips have to push forward. So we really emphasize the, the use of the glute uh, and the hamstring and the tension across that to do so. Now then I'll add in one other component, which is for the torso, the thoracic posture and the cervical posture. So we're talking mid back up through the head is shoulders in the back pocket. So this is in reference to making sure we keep the lats active. We don't fall forward and disorganize in our mid to upper back and really simple drill to think about. Think about taking your shoulder blades and setting them into the back pocket so it forces us to kind of draw them back and then set them down so we can keep the lats active. So then, okay, spine straight, break at the hip line or the groin like the Ninja Turtle, and then hips forward with the shoulders in the back pocket the entire time. And we see a lot of movement improvement in doing so. And then we can go into appropriate loading. So you'll also notice my chin is pretty vertical. I'm not throwing my knees forward. I'm keeping my planting and keeping my shin pretty vertical. And extending on that, oftentimes we can use a hurdle to reinforce that. Where, okay, maybe an inch between you and the hurdle. If I was going to, you know, do a deadlift with this kettlebell. I don't want my knees to come too far forward, so I'll bend the knees, I'll hinge, keep the back straight, and then up, and then hips forward, shoulders in the back pocket, and then try to keep that same path on the way down, and then up, and going forward. So then we can get into more technical positioning in regards to that, which we would talk about like the single leg Romanian deadlift, and this is a really good one for unilateral strength. You have unilateral, bilateral, quick reference. Unilateral is single, single limb component, and then bilateral is both planted, connected. Um, it's like the difference between doing a one arm chest press and then doing a barbell bench press or a push up. Anyways, so on this, I use the, I use the hinge much the same. I would actually go ahead and take my foot, put it an inch, you know, put my shin an inch back from that. I'm gonna take this foot, I'm gonna kick the heel up nice and long because I want this to move with my torso. As I set the kettlebell down, I keep straight back and I return. And then I keep all of the work in that posterior chain appropriately. Now you'll notice every time I set it down, I try to keep it inside the foot, not forward, so I focus on keeping that shoulder in the back pocket. Now those are the different methods that I like to use to teach people how to hinge before going into straight deadlifting with a bar or other more difficult components where we go into a loaded hinge. Now the dangers that come along with poor loaded hinging oftentimes are related to the vertebrae and the disc, herniation, bulging, you know, so forth. And the more that we go into that, flexion extension and work on that, then, you know, the, the disc is something that wears over time and we're going to face degeneration as we get older. So if we can be in the optimal position when we're loaded, then we can actually typically reduce a lot of that wear and tear on our spine. So I hope you guys enjoyed what you guys learned today. Make sure you put this into practice in the gym, do your drills to prepare, and then you can go forward into loading appropriately. Thank you guys.